Good evening and welcome to the Wednesday night Bible study for Lone Star Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, tonight is Wednesday night, April the 1st. So we're moving into a new month. And thank the Lord has given us another month uh, to live life. And he's been so good to us. And we always want to thank him and uh, praise him for all that he does. Of course, uh, we'll continue to uh, have our uh, Wednesday night Bible study online uh, at least this week and looks like for the foreseeable future we may have to continue to do that but Lord willing I'll continue to uh, get that done and have it to you by Wednesday night I trust everybody's having a good week as I record this on Wednesday afternoon it's about two o'clock it's a beautiful day outside and I'm thankful the Lord gave us some rain this week I don't know about where you are, but it was dry here and uh, got gardens planted and uh, things in the ground and so grateful for the rain that the Lord sent our way. And now the sunshine, a little bit cooler weather, too. And uh, so grateful for that. It won't be long till we won't have any more of these cool snaps. Summer will be here. So we'll enjoy uh, this little respite from the heat. I want to make a statement quickly before I go into the study. And I heard another minister allude to this uh, Sunday in a broadcast that I was uh, watching. And uh, he made this statement, and I thought it was very accurate, and I wanted to share it with you. And uh, the statement went something like this, that, uh, that church on the Internet is a sorry substitute for getting together to worship. And I thought that was about as good a statement uh, as I've heard concerning what we're having to do right now. Uh, I know that because of the risk of spreading this coronavirus and of course that it's continuing to change daily that the things that we've heard even from our president this week help us to understand the seriousness of this if you didn't already understand the seriousness of it but uh, we've been forced to use the internet in order to have our at least our Sunday night service and our Wednesday night service and I'm thankful we have it. Uh, we're, we're doing it more than usual. I know we try to put up YouTube uh, videos of our, at least our Sunday morning and Sunday night service each week. But right now it's basically all that we have because of the limitations that have been placed on us uh, because of the virus. But uh, it really is, I, I, that minister made an accurate statement. It really is a sorry substitute for gathering together to worship and uh, he went on and made a statement like this that don't ever think for a moment that God accepts uh, this as a substitute for coming together now I believe that it, I, I believe we're doing the right thing right now uh, if I didn't then I would uh, certainly direct the church in a different direction and I know God understands all these things uh, but I want you to uh, understand that uh, as soon as this is over with, uh, that uh, we, Lord willing, we're going to go back to having service as usual. And you don't need to get used to internet service. And I think there's a great danger uh, through this that people get to the place where they say, get up on Sunday morning. Well, I've got a headache. I don't feel good. I've got a backache. Or, you know, Wednesday night, I'm just tired. I've been at work all day. And, uh, you know, here's an opportunity. I'll just stay home and I'll listen to the preaching and I'll get the message and it'll be just as good as going to church. Well, Satan would like for you to think that. Uh, but according to the scriptures that we're not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. And uh, so even though man may justify his actions that I don't believe you'll justify it with the word of God. And I believe when we stand before God that uh, we'll have to give an account uh, if we were not faithful to his services. And I don't believe that if you're able-bodied, I know some not able to go. I know there's shut-ins. We have them in the church that are unable to get out at all. No way for them to come to church. I'm talking about that when it's just more convenient to stay home. I don't believe God is going to accept that in judgment. And so I just want to remind you of that, that what we're doing is... Uh, it's expedient, it's necessary under the circumstances, but it is a poor, sorry substitute 
uh, for us coming together. And even that's why on Wednesday night we're trying to do the conference call. At least that we can hear one another's voices and share prayer requests and thanksgivings and things with one another. We need each other. I love you as a church uh, so much. You don't know what you mean to me. It's been a great blessing to, to pastor you and uh, you're just uh, wonderful people. And uh, this getting together on the internet is just not the same. And so let's always uh, be grateful and thankful for the opportunity to come together. Bow with me in prayer. Heavenly Father, thankful for this opportunity tonight to share a portion of your word. I don't know who all will listen to it, but you do. And you know even the burden you've placed upon my heart. And I pray that uh, those that would hear it would not just hear it with their ears, but would hear it with their hearts. And that it could go sink deep into our hearts. And that uh, we could receive the message as your word. Strength, be strengthened thereby. Father, for those that's lost, that they would trust you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now what I want to do tonight is read a few verses of scripture out of 1 Kings chapter 17 to start with. I know there's a lot of messages that's been preached in the last few weeks, maybe dealing with the situation that we're in. And uh, you may get tired of hearing messages along those lines, but uh, the bottom line is this, that uh, the, the word of God's applicable to every situation. And in times like these that we're faced with uncertain circumstances, maybe faced with fear and anxiety, and we need the word of God to comfort us. I want to read a a passage of scripture in first Kings 17, a very familiar passage of scripture uh, concerning Elijah and a time in his life when uh, he would go uh, to be taken care of by a widow woman. And I know you'd be familiar with the, the passage and yet I want to read it to us again and try to take a thought out of this. So first Kings chapter 17, if you want to read along with us, let's begin reading in verse one and Elijah, the Tishbite who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, Behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, and go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days, and the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the crews of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. I know that's a little lengthy reading. That's reading 16 verses here in First Kings chapter 17. And again, I know it's a familiar scripture. We know that Elijah had, uh, as, we, as we read, that he would go before the king and that he would tell him that the Lord has spoken unto him and told him to uh, tell uh, King Ahab that it's not going to rain nor dew these years according uh, to thy word and then he would go and be fed by the ravens drink of the brook but it tells us in verse 7 that after a while i don't know how long it was it was after a while the brook dried up and the reason the brook dried up was because that god had sent a drought unto the land and so the lord would speak unto elijah and tell him you go down to zarephath which was on the mediterranean sea coast and 
that there's a widow woman there and uh, that I have commanded her to sustain thee and uh, that uh, certainly the things that we read uh, concerning that Elijah went to her and uh, asked uh, that she would make him a little cake first and according to the promise that God had given that the barrel of meal uh, didn't run out and the cruise of oil didn't fail all the time that the drought and the famine was there upon the earth. Now, uh, we know that the nature of the this pandemic that we're dealing with right now is at least unprecedented uh, in our time. No doubt that there's nothing new under the sun. And if we could go back, if we could go back through history far enough and really had it recorded, uh, no doubt that there's been things similar to this that uh, probably have taken place in the past. But uh, the reason that this particular pandemic is unprecedented is because of the worldwide nature of it. I looked at a map today. I, I was just curious. And so I, I pulled up a map on the internet and looked and uh, they had shaded in the countries where there was recorded cases of the coronavirus, as, I guess, as of yesterday or today, whenever the map was updated. And there were just very, very few countries that were left unshaded and just one here and one there. It's a worldwide pandemic and uh the problem with that is that you can't just pull resources from one place to help somewhere else you know when we have a hurricane or uh, maybe there's an earthquake or different natural disasters that we have in from time to time in this country we we'll use a hurricane we familiar with that down here uh for, uh, for instance the one that hit florida a couple of years ago uh, i believe it was hurricane michael if i'm not mistaken but uh, when that hurricane hit, it was devastating, but it devastated a small area. And uh, even though it was very costly, and for the people that were there, that their life was turned upside down, yet resources could be brought in from other places because that, uh, well, even here, we weren't affected by it at all. And uh, so it was no problem uh, to use the extra resources from one place to send it there to help them. But it's not like that with this. This is worldwide. Just about every country is dealing with it. And uh, because of that, the health care systems overwhelmed. Doctors and nurses and supplies and ventilators and all these things that they talk about are, you know, being exhausted because of the fact that there's there's nowhere you can just pull a surplus from. And uh, what I'm beginning to see uh, is I'm beginning to see fear in the hearts of a lot of people. And maybe even this week, as the president would announce that... Uh, this thing's going to last longer than we first anticipated. That I, I see the hearts of men beginning to fail. And you can just tell that there's fear and there's anxiety among so many people uh, in this country. And if we're not careful, these things will cause fear in our hearts that uh, we'll begin to worry and fret uh, over this thing. But I want to remind you of a few things tonight. And just try to take it from a little different direction. I know several weeks ago on Sunday morning, maybe the first week we dealt with it, maybe tried to preach a, a message of comfort and encouragement and how the, this should cause us to draw nigh to God. But I want to remind you of this tonight, that there's many things that are overwhelmed because of this virus. Our, you know, our, our health care system is, is overwhelmed. The economy it seems to be uh, overwhelmed. Our government officials are overwhelmed. Now, we know they don't get along in peacetime or in times when there's there's no crisis going on. But, you know, in a time like this, when, when there's an enemy that we're all facing, that uh, most of the time that the politicians can set aside things and, and sort of at least work together and get along for the sake of the common good. Uh, but you see fighting among them. Uh, you see uh, w different ones, maybe governor of this state criticizing the governor of another state. And and I, I tell you, the reason for that is that all those people are overwhelmed. They're to a, a place where uh, they really just don't know what to do. And when we get overwhelmed, we, we panic. And when we panic, we can't think clearly. Uh, even the, the basic things, very basic things that we, we take for granted that we do on a daily basis, those things tend to become very difficult uh, for us. Uh, 
And so there's so many things that are, are just overwhelmed right now. There's a lot of families that are overwhelmed. What are we going to do? How are we going to pay our bills? Uh, how are we going to stay safe from this thing? And uh, Yet I want to remind you of something tonight, that we serve a God who in no way is overwhelmed. In no sense of, of, of the, the meaning of the word whatsoever is God in a place where he doesn't know what to do. Is he in a place where there's too much going on and, and he's no longer able to handle it and uh, that he's not thinking clearly and, and he's panicking and, and all of those things that we see taking place uh, here. I thought about this as I was preparing for the study tonight. Uh, NASA and I guess these other groups that they tell us about the vastness of the universe and they try to explain that to us about how big it is and how we're just a little speck in the universe. And that just blows my mind, just to be honest with you. I, I can't fathom all that. And I guess we're not supposed to be able to fathom all that. Uh, but I want to remind you of this, that every day, every single day, God takes care of the entire universe. He keeps it going. He keeps it in order. The, the, the universe that we don't even know the vastness of it, things that are just, you think about how far a light year is, and yet that a lot of those things are, are measured in hundreds and thousands and maybe millions of light years away. That's vast. And yet God controls it. Listen to me tonight, uh, child of God. This coronavirus is not a big deal to God. He's not worried about it. It's not overwhelming his resources, that it's not caught him off guard. Uh, he's not in a panic. And if you're beginning to be afraid, and I know people are afraid, older people, uh, a lot of older people are afraid because they, they hear uh, the, the statistics that are given to us. And uh, I'm not in no way am I trying to diminish this virus uh, from, from what I hear, that even some that uh, I've talked to that in the medical profession that it's real and it's something that is dangerous and, and it's, it's severe. Uh, but it, you may be an older person and, and you're, you, you've just let, you, you've let Satan and you've let the news media and what you hear, you just let it overwhelm you. Or maybe you're a, a mother or a father and you've got young children and you worry about those young children. Or maybe you worry about yourself. Uh, that uh, Here's what I want you to see tonight. That the God who takes care of the universe, the God who keeps the, the solar systems and the planets and the moon, the sun, the stars, who, who keeps all those things in order, uh, that he is still very, very much aware of of each and every one of us and he knows where we are God knows where you are he knows what you need he's not affected by this in any way God is not holed up somewhere in a quarantine he's he's not in a place where he's trying to keep from from getting this thing so he could continue to to run the universe and I know God is a spirit uh, we know that, that Jesus Christ came to earth as God in the flesh, and he's, he continues to be God in the flesh at the right hand of the Father. If we could get a glimpse into heaven right now, you wouldn't see Jesus Christ sitting there with a mask on. You wouldn't see him with gloves on. He hadn't backed off six feet from the Father in, to, in order to practice social distancing. And you say, well, preacher, that's just foolish what you're talking about. Well, how foolish is it when we become afraid and we become scared and we, and we just cower down in, in fright over this thing, but to know that God, that he still sees, he still cares, he still loves, he still provides, he's still able to do all of these things that he's always been able to do. And this coronavirus has not affected him in the least bit. Let me remind you of some uh, ways that God describes himself to us uh, in the scriptures. And uh, I'm not going to just try to just 
read a lot of scripture, take a lot more of your time. I know I'm already sitting at 20 minutes here on this, and without video, it may, may be harder to keep your attention. But in Psalm chapter 23, I know this is one of the most familiar chapters in the Bible. Listen to what uh, the, the psalmist says here. He says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. So you think about being overwhelmed. You think about being afraid. And yet God says, let me describe my care for you in this way. He said, I'm a shepherd and you're the sheep. And he said, because I'm the shepherd and I have unlimited resources at my disposal and there's no one that can stop me from doing that that uh, I'm going to do. He said, my sheep, and that's the thing. If you're not saved, you need to be afraid. You need to be very afraid of, of what's going on today uh, because that you don't have this, these promises that the, these uh, the wonderful uh, statements of, of, of encouragement and promise that God gave to his children, you don't have that to fall back on, to rely on. Uh, yeah, you, if, I'm, if I'm relying on the government, if I'm relying on uh, charitable organizations, if I'm relying on the healthcare system, I'm going to be afraid, but I'm not relying on these things. I'm relying on my shepherd and my shepherd is the Lord. He said, I shall, David, David said, the Lord's my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let me remind you something about, uh, about Jesus Christ, who is our shepherd. He never loses a sheep. Now, there's times when we as sheep, when we drift away, when we go all, all our, our separate way, our fleshly way, and uh, that we'll get away from the Lord. But he's always there calling. He's always there uh, uh, available and begging us to come back. And so that he doesn't leave. He knows where every one of his sheep are. He's got the resources to take care of us, to feed us, to clothe us to give us all the things that we need. And so remember that as, if Christ is your shepherd, you don't have anything to fear. You shall not want. Uh, notice that uh, he, he made the statement here in verse 4, I will fear no evil. The statement that Elijah made to the, uh, to the widow woman there at Zarephath, fear not. How many times does God say, fear not? You don't have to worry about it. So the Lord describes himself that I'm your shepherd and I'm the good shepherd. I'm the great shepherd. I'm the chief shepherd. I am the shepherd who has everything that the sheep need. Uh, God's not going out trying to buy things today and finding the shelves empty. <laughs> he has everything that we need. But let me remind you of something else that the scripture says and how God describes himself to us. Matthew chapter 7. And uh, certainly when you think about uh, the relationship that we have with God, Matthew chapter 7, Jesus said, Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh, receiveth, and he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you, whom if his son ask bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good gifts to them that ask him? Now you think about that. Now the Lord describes himself as a father, not just a shepherd, but a father. You think about the love that the fa a father has or a mother has for their children. You know, uh, there's one thing I never worried about growing up, and that is I never worried about were my needs going to be taken care of, my physical needs, my material needs. I knew this. I knew that my parents would be willing to go without to take care of me and to provide my needs. And that's the thing. When God, your Father, He won't have to go without. Uh, again, as I said, 
that there's nothing about him that's limited. He's unlimited in every way. And the love that a father has for uh, his children is, is that that is really indescribable. You think about that prodigal son that went away and oh, how awful that he had treated his parents. And now he went out and wasted all those things, yet his father still loved him. And whether or not that you've been, quote unquote, a good son or you've been a prodigal son, that if you're a son, then God is your father. And he said, if, if, if ye then, being evil, know how to give, give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? So he's a father. I want to turn back to the book of Proverbs, chapter 18. Remind you of another uh, description that we have of the Lord. In verse 24, a man that hath friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. He's not only a shepherd, he's not only a father, but he's a friend. And he's that friend that loveth at all times. He's that friend, he's that brother that's born for adversity. And there's one thing about it. Uh, when you have a true friend, that friend can be counted on. That friend can be relied upon. That when you're in trouble, all you have to do is get in touch with that friend. That friend will be right there to help you. And so that we have a friend that sticks closer than any brother uh, could ever uh, stick uh, close to us in our life. That he's one who is there for us. He said, he'll never leave us nor forsake us. And I want to remind you of one, one more title that that God uh, gives of himself uh, toward us in Genesis chapter 22 in verse 14 we know Abraham took Isaac up the mountain and that as Abraham that as he took the knife to slay his son that God stopped him he showed him a ram caught in the thicket by his horns and that ram was a substitute there and in verse 14 it says and Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh as it is said to this day in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen Jehovah Jireh uh, that simply means God, our provider. And uh, when you think about that to, tonight or this afternoon, whenever you're listening to this, that God is our provider. And when you think about one who provides, he, the Bible says he daily loads us with benefits. He provides all that we need. Paul said it like this in Philippians chapter 4, that my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus according to his riches and glory, not according to FEMA, not according to uh, University of Mississippi Medical Center, not according to Forest General, not according to any other organization here on this earth, but according to his riches in glory. And those things are unlimited. There's no limit. There's no, uh, there's no uh, restriction that's, that's placed upon those things that he has what we need. He is our provider. So tonight, are you afraid? Are you worried? You don't have to be. Fear not. Fear not. If you're a child of God, you got a shepherd, you got a father, you got a friend that sticks closer than a brother, and you've got a provider. So he said, you think on those things. Think on those things. He he made let me remind you of this. I didn't intend on turn over and reading this, but it always is an encouragement to me. He said in Philippians chapter four, verse six, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Whatever you're afraid about, take it to God in prayer. And it says the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And he went on to Talk about those things we ought to think on. He said, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, he said, think on these things. Nothing wrong with uh, watching the news. Nothing wrong with uh, reading the news, whether it be on social media or other media uh, avenues on, on the Internet. But, uh, you know, they're not going to provide you with a lot of hope. They're not going to provide you with a lot of encouragement and comfort. But the Lord provides you with peace. And so tonight, that uh, that's what's on my heart, and I trust that uh, these few words could be a blessing unto you. Heavenly Father, take the message, use it for your honor and glory, and I pray that we wouldn't fear, wouldn't be afraid, wouldn't panic, wouldn't cower down in anxiety and allow Satan to get the best of us. That's what he wants. 
because if we fail to trust in you, we'll trust in something. And uh, that that we trust in will be displeasing unto you. And Heavenly Father, uh, continue to uh, bless and continue to uh, give strength to those who are on the front lines of this thing, to the doctors, to the nurses, to the health care workers, the aides, uh, our first responders, our leaders, so many people today that we look to uh, for uh, for guidance. And, and I don't mean in the spiritual things, but even to know what to do and how to act in this world. And I pray for them, hold them up. I know there's many that's thousands that's, that's sick right now with this virus. And uh, even though I don't know any personally, that each one is a soul that you love. I pray for them, pray for their families, even as they have to be away from them during this time. I know that's one thing that uh, is a comfort to us when, we, when we're down, when we're sick, to have those that we love around us. And I know that because of this, it's impossible right now. I pray for them as well. Help us as your people that we wouldn't fear, but that we would be strong in faith, be strong in courage, uh, resting on your promises. It's in Jesus' name I ask. Amen. Now, as of right now, uh, we will continue as the church voted, continue to have our service Sunday morning there at the church, and uh, then we'll continue to do our Sunday night and Wednesday night service uh, online. So may the Lord bless you is my prayer.